Yeah, That's the right species. Yeah. That's right. I got a line on me. Don't pull on those lines right now, guys. As soon as this thing comes up, I would take a step excuse out of the Excuse me, excuse me. Just woke up. <laughs> Just gonna go under the anchor or over. Every time I think I'm getting on it. <laughs> This is one of those moments where I wish I was able to just go straight 40 pound and just horse it in already. Yeah. You see color at all? Welcome back guys, here's another episode of Cooking with Eddie and we're going to make some blue fin burgers. Similar ingredients, if not the same ingredients that we're going to use for uh, pokey, I'm going to put in my blue fin tuna. So what we're going to do, instead of getting the several ingredients to make my sesame, I'm going to use sesame um, ginger by Paul Newman. We're going to do some sriracha, low sodium soy sauce, some Dynasty sesame hot oil, a little bit of garlic salt, some minced garlic, and some canola oil just to spray around my uh, blades of my food processor. You can see I'm missing my food processor right now. I've got that sitting in my freezer, um, getting nice and cold, so that way when I put the chunks of the bluefin in there, it won't stick. It'll help emulsify it, and we'll go ahead and make some burgers out of it. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you that watch some of my other videos, um, I'm big on glass bowls to help chill whatever fish you're using. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of frost going on in this bowl here. I've got some bluefin already cut up and I've got a slab to kind of uh, cut up right here. There might be a little film here, so it's okay to take your knife, go against it, clean it up. This is like a little skin that you won't use. And let's cut this bad boy up. What we're going to do is we're just putting it into chunks. There's no specific right or wrong cut to do because we're going to put it in the food processor. All right, now I actually do have some measurements because I actually shared this recipe with a friend of mine, so I can actually tell you precise measurements. If it's uh, not the consistency you want as far as flavor, you can always increase the measurements. To this, a quarter cup of Paul Newman's uh, sesame ginger in here, which I've added right here. We're gonna do equal parts of the soy sauce. Just gonna put that in there. We're gonna do a uh, quarter cup of the Dynasty oil. Do a little drizzle of sriracha, like about a tablespoon. 
We're going to do the equivalency of one to two minced garlic. Like that. A little drizzle of garlic salt. To this, we've got a half a bushel of cilantro, finely chopped. Two jalapenos, one yellow, one green. I took half the seeds out of each, so basically I have the equivalency of one jalapeno with the seeds. And then four green onions, green and yellow, together. We're going to add all the ingredients to here. Let's go ahead and mix it up. Go ahead and get your hands dirty. Give it a nice little toss. Doesn't have to be too perfect because we are going to put it in the food processor and pulse it up for a little bit. Now, we did make this uh, a couple of days ago. We made some pokey out of this. Probably one of the best pokey I ever had. Would you say, Ray? I've had a lot of different styles of pokey, and bluefin was by far the best pokey I've ever had. So for you guys, if you don't want to make burgers and you like the consistency of what that looks like, um, crack open an avocado, get some uh, tortilla chips, plate it up, eat it with some chips and avocado. It's, it's really good. Uh, but if you want something different and you had pokey before, let's go ahead and make these burgers. I've got my food processor, uh, a little bit of frost there. Uh, it was in the freezer for about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, so this should help make it so it doesn't stick too bad. I am gonna do a little bit of spray just to the blade and to the outside, not much. It's good enough. This will help with, so it's not so sticky. I've got a cookie sheet with some parchment paper because at the end when we form our burgers, we wanted to form on here and put it in the fridge and let it rest up for at minimum an hour. The longer you can let it rest, the better because I'm not using a binding agent. So when you put it in the refrigerator, it'll help kind of stiffen up a little bit and we'll transfer it to a hot griddle. I was also asked a question, why do I mix in the bowl instead of mixing it in here? That's a great I, question. Says the peanut gallery. So let me tell you why. It was actually a pretty good question, so I'll give it to Ashley. So the reason I do that is I want to guarantee a good mix to make sure everything got mixed up evenly versus if I put it in here and if I'm pulsing it a couple of times, I'm not assuring a good mix. So this is assuring that you've mixed it evenly and one burger is not going to be more flavorful than the other. Good question out there. If you have any other questions out there, hit us up and we'll go ahead and respond and let you know. Ah. <laughs> to get the consistency, I'm going to pulse it up. Usually it's anywhere between 10 to 13 pulses to get the consistency I'm looking for. If you just hit it on bland, you're going to get, it's going to be way too mushy and we don't want mushy. So let's go ahead and pulse it up. Let's count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About halfway there, you want to check the consistency just to make sure that you're still on target. As you can see, we're almost there. Might be good. I just want to give it a few more pulses. There's eight, nine, ten. I think we're good. So, let's go ahead and take your blade out. Let's go ahead and flip it upside down on your cutting board. So you can see minimum stickiness. So there's not very much in there. You can get in there with your fingers because you're going to get getting dirty anyways right now. And you're good to go. Uh, so again, good tip. Freeze it up for about 20 minutes in the freezer and then give it a light spray with some canola oil or any kind of uh, cooking spray you have. Now let's firm these up to burgers. You can see this is pretty darn close to consistency of the hamburger meat. Um, looks a little mushy just because of the, the sauces that we have in there and we're going to form them up into burgers. Give about a good handful. Put it on your wax paper. Repeat the process. You can also spray your hands so it won't be as sticky. Um, I didn't do it, so you can kind of see the difference and mark it up. Let us know which way you tried and which way you preferred. All right, so we've got them all firmed up. One of the things I should have said in the very beginning is how much bluefin did we have to make this recipe? Uh, we used approximately about four pounds of bluefin to make these burgers. Um, so when you look at that, these are gonna be some nice thick burgers. Uh, we're gonna let them firm up in the refrigerator um, before we put them on the hot skillet or the hot griddle outside, and then we're gonna make our burgers. They're gonna be very basic. They're gonna be nice toasted potato buns. Um, and then to that, we're gonna add maybe some tartar sauce or plain. 
You can do other recipes on it, like if you wanted to do like a barbecue theme, you can do like a pineapple teriyaki, grill up some pineapple, and put the pineapple on the bread with the burger, so you can have two different variations. But for this, I think this is uh, more than enough flavor, and I don't want to take away, so tartar sauce is about the only added ingredient we'll add at the end. This is optional. I love grated Parmesan, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put grated Parmesan on a few of them as well. All right guys, time has come. Let's go ahead and take the burgers out of the fridge. So once again, there's no binding agents. Uh, we just put it in the fridge for a little over an hour. So then that way we could go ahead and firm it up and throw it on a hot uh, griddle that we got going outside. Uh, it's a little dark, so we recruited a light person uh, that's ready to go for us. <laughs> Let's go ahead and grill these up. All right, so I've got the buns already getting ready to toast. And now we're about to put these burgers on. Let's go ahead and transfer them. Let these burgers cook. We're going to cook them medium rare, so we're going to probably do it about uh, two minutes per side. All right, so it's been about two minutes. Let's go ahead and give these burgers a flip. It's been a couple minutes now. I'm going to go ahead and take them off, and let's plate them up. time has come so let's uh, eat these burgers up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, put them on we're gonna do them two different ways so because this is a pokey flavored bluefin burger I actually because uh, avocado goes great with pokey I've got half an avocado on one side and the other half I'm just gonna eat it the way it is and I decided no tartar sauce I'm gonna complement this with some sweet potato fries Ray has a different version Ray talk about yours on mine, I put tartar sauce, sriracha mayo, and sriracha, and avocado. I would suggest let's split it up, but uh, I think that's way too intense for me, so I'm going to stick with mine. And we're going to complement these with, uh, not, not to mention the fries, but we're also going to have a couple of beers. Got a couple of Lagunitas. Look at that. That's a sign of a good beer. I think that's a sign that you don't know how to pour beer. Whatever. We are going to give this a uh, whirl. Kind of smush mine down a little bit. I'm going in for my bite. I'm going to go avocado side first. Really good. That's really, really good. I'm going to try the other side without the cotto, and I'll let you know which one I like better. See, it's medium rare. You don't want to cook these bad boys well done at all. I like it plain. Um, Avocado is great. I may even try to throw some tartar sauce in here, but these are great burgers. Good quality fish. You really don't want to add too much to it. It's a really good burger. Let's check out Ray's Burger. So I would say that's really good, but I think Chef Eddie jinxed it because that, that tastes like too much. But I've used the same ingredients on Yellowtail Burgers, if you guys have seen that video, and this is definitely better than the Yellowtail Burgers. So guys, that's another episode of Catch and Cook, Cooking with Eddie. Hope you liked this episode. Give it a try. You won't be disappointed. You'll be saying the same thing I did. Yum yum, you won't be disappointed.